What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 21 and we start today's episode off with a squad report as promised. I know I was supposed to show it in the last episode but I did explain in that episode I forgot all about it so I apologize for that. But here is the squad report. You can check out what the players are doing and uh, what attributes they are improving in or decreasing in and yeah I've, I've said a few times before you know I've been Pretty pleased with our signings, but not pleased with their growth. Um, you know, Abita is still only going up by one. Hughes hasn't grown a single rating despite holding down a regular first team place in this West Bromwich Albion side. Patrick Roberts has gone up by three, which I'm impressed with. But Nastasic hasn't improved either. It's been quite frustrating, really. I mean, I'm, uh, Vestergaard went up by two as well. It's been okay. You know, I'm pleased that some of the players have been improving in stats where they deserve to be. Obviously, Brown today has gone up. Sado Berahino has gone up as well, which is nice to see. But, you know, when you think about I can't really understand and I can't put my finger on why Will Hughes hasn't gone up a single rating and a beat has only gone up by one and it's just surprising because you know it's not those it's not like those players have been bad I mean Will Hughes had a really bad start to the season didn't really do much at all uh, but he kept his place in the starting 11 he's, he's done okay he's trying to win a couple of assists now and he's got a goal as well against QPR um, but Abita uh, he got an assist in the game against Villa he's he's got a couple of assists this season he's done quite well I can't really understand why Abita's only gone up, gone up by one Hughes hasn't grown at all since they've both been key first 11 players so I don't know if you guys could comment and let me know why that is because there's probably some science to it I just don't understand but to me I would have thought both of those players would have gone up by you know two or three minimum you know Patrick Ross has gone up by three and he's been sort of in and out of the side you know in the first 11 and uh, Berahino has been a first team player he's gone up by four so why exactly have Hughes and Abita not grown I don't know if you guys know then please let me know and uh, we'll have a look but uh, still uh, we take on Sunderland uh, for the first game of today's episode here and as we travel to the Stadium of Light, as you can see by my team, I picked a very, very weak side. As you can see, there were starts for Andre Wisdom and Gamboa and uh, Sessegnon, who hasn't really been in the first team since his injury uh, during the autumn. So uh, quite a weak side. Players like Dawson and Coleman getting on the bench, who rarely ever play. So a very weak side. And the reason behind that is because the players were tired. And we also had a game on the weekend as well uh, in the FA Cup against Swansea. And uh, the first chance, no surprises, went to Swansea. Sunderland and they hit the post from the sixth minute there uh, and as we failed to get the ball away Seb Larsson collected the ball played inside towards Van Anholt we failed to clear the ball away again Larsson the Swedish midfielder finds Will Buckley the former Brighton man finds Alvarez who uh, strikes the ball and Ben Foster makes a save and turns it behind for a corner so still scoreless but um, you know playing a really weak side here at the Stadium of Light. I mean, don't get me wrong, Sunderland may not be the most threatening of sides, if I can say that, but they're, you know, they're definitely going to be the favourites because we picked such a weak side and there you see another chance for them and again, Ben Foster has to make a good save and it's still scoreless in the 28th minute. Another good chance for Sunderland. Alvarez gets on the ball again, back heels it in towards Morrison. Morrison collects it, slides it inside towards Seb Larson, and Ben Foster makes an absolutely fantastic double save and Van Anholt sna uh, smashes the shot wide. So in the first half... It was all about Sunderland coming forward and us struggling to defend. And had we not had the brilliant Ben Foster in goal, we could have been two or three goals down already. And on the stroke of half time, it's James Morrison, our former player, who strikes it. But again, Ben Foster makes a good save and keeps it nil nil. So the first half, we really did struggle to defend. So in the second half, I thought instead of just parking the bus and defending, let's go out and attack. And as we win the ball back straight from kickoff, Claudio Jakob finds Danny Ings, who rounds Pantilamon. And the former City goalkeeper, the Romanian, brings down Danny Ings. And we've literally our first attack of the game we win a penalty directly from Sunderland's kickoff in the second half we intercept with Jakob, we play it through to Ings Ings has the pace, rounds the giant goalkeeper who takes him down he's lucky he got a booking and not a straight red card and it's a penalty to West Bromwich Albion so seriously Gus Poirier must have been sitting there thinking seriously a first half you know 45 minutes worth of shooting and no goals and then they get one penalty from their first attack absolutely ridiculous but still it is going to be Varela the man on loan from Porto who will stand up and take this against Pantilamon. What a chance for us to make it 1-0 here at the Stadium of Light and take a shock lead, but I tell you what, I am terrible at penalties and the proof is in the pudding right there. I chipped it straight at Pantilamon and that is the worst penalty I think I've ever taken. I rarely go down the middle because usually the goalkeepers stand there when I go down the middle and I look, I look like an idiot and uh, clearly the same thing happened there. Oh, absolutely ridiculous but still in the 60th minute we could have had another penalty there as Danny has got taken down again and again and again we did win a penalty so he's got taken down twice. 
and only one penalty was given, obviously. But um, yeah, as you'll see, the first collision seemed more of a penalty than the second one. And as you'll see there, the second one is what it's given for here as Virginie barges into him, but he could have won, you know, that, that the first penalty award was a definite penalty when he rounded Pantillamon. And he should have won a penalty in that first phase of play. He didn't get it, but we did win a penalty after that. So penalty again, two penalties here at the stadium alike from two attacks. Varela was stood up to take it, but I was like, no way. I mean, it was my fault I missed the penalty, but I was still like, no way, I'm not letting him take it. So I gave it to Danny Ings, who'd won us both penalties, who stands up to take it against Pantillamon. There was no way I was putting it down the middle this time. So I tried to curl it into the top corner, and I succeeded. Pantillamon stands down the middle again, clearly thinking that Ings was going to be as stupid as I was with Varela, but instead, Ings finishes it easily, puts it into the top corner, and it's no real surprise that the first man to celebrate with him is Varela. There's no, there's no doubt about it, man. I've, I've never been so relieved in a game of FIFA when I've had a penalty because that was just ridiculous. The first penalty was so embarrassing, but thankfully, Danny Ings makes it two. Uh, sorry, makes it one nil from our second penalty. So Ings, who won us two penalties in this game, makes it one nil, and I'm absolutely delighted. And in the second half, Sunderland rarely attacked. To be honest, it was a real, real poor showing from them. But when they did attack, they did unfortunately score. Adam Johnson smashing it at the near post. Ben Foster couldn't keep it out. And uh, the former Manchester City winger ends up making it Sunderland 1, West Brom 1. So it was really only a matter of time before Sunderland would score after so many attacks he had in the first half. But it's still disappointing to see us concede there as we were just nine minutes away from claiming a very good three points. But still, Sunderland 1, West Brom 1. And in the 89th minute, you see Berahino go on a run down the right hand side, takes on Lee Catamol and beats him. Great opportunity here as he offloads it towards Kingsley Coman off the bench, fake shots around Liam Bridcut. Uh, ball rolls, keeps holding the ball, plays it inside. Berahino strikes it, but it's a great. Great save by Pantillamon and he keeps it at 1-1 as we go into injury time. And one of the last chances would fall here was Stefan Sessignon, the former Sunderland man who stood over this free kick. What a chance for us to grab ourselves a late winner. We needed a good delivery from Sessignon into the centre and hopefully pick out a runner and hopefully they would be able to head the ball past Pantillamon. It was Sessignon with the free kick. Well, I wasn't sure whether to go for goal and try something ambitious, but I thought, nope, I'm going to try and curl it into the centre. It was Sessignon with the free kick who picks out Nabu. Bill Bentaleb and Bentaleb with one of his first touches since coming off the bench and most importantly in one of his first games for the club scores us the winning goal in injury time. Bentaleb heads in the Sessignon free kick after he came off the bench and the Algerian makes it Sunderland 1 West Bromwich Albion 2. So absolutely incredible. Pantillamon beating for the second time in this game and I just could not believe it. I really couldn't because I brought on Bentaleb mainly to cope with Sunderland's attacking threat as a bit of a holding midfielder. Instead, he ends up scoring us the winner with virtually the last, well, it wasn't the last kick of the game, but virtually the last, it was the last attack of the game. And as you'll see, a Sunderland uh, played the ball forward from the kickoff here. The referee blows for full time, and we get the win by two goals to one with Bentaleb coming off the bench. No wonder he takes the celebrations with Jakob there. And it was just bizarre, it really was, because I brought him off the bench primarily to defend, and instead he scores us the winner. So, uh, scores us the winner. so Absolutely delighted about that, I really am. And again, it was a backup side we played there, you know, only a couple of first team players in Foster and Nastasic, and everyone else was really a, a substitute slash reserve. But instead, we got the win, and I'm absolutely delighted. It's another three points, and we've just, the second half of the season has just been incredible. You know, I don't want to jinx it or say anything too premature. But we've been amazing in the second half of the season, we really have. We've only had a couple of defeats. Everything else has been a draw or a win, obviously that's all it could be. And we've been really, really good and we've deserved the position we've been in. You know, we, We're in the top half of the table finish right now and we've deserved this. We've been fantastic. But uh, still, the following game was indeed going to be against Swansea City here in the FA Cup quarter final. And of course, you saw by my lineup there, I did pick an unbelievably strong side because yes, in the game against Crew, I said the FA Cup is not my main priority it never will be but now it's getting real it's getting real now there is a chance for us to go to the final if we play our cards right and get ourselves good performances on these days and as you can see Ben Taleb was rewarded uh, rewarded after his uh, his winning goal against Sunderland with a first start for the club and as you can see that the whole squad was really really strong the lineup I picked was very very decent because now the FA Cup is my main focus I mean you know it's never been my main focus ever but now it is because there's a real chance we can get ourselves 
through to Wembley by winning this game and going through to the semi-finals and depending on the draw you never know we could actually get ourselves through to the final so that's why I did pick up a very strong side and so did Gary Monk he picked a very decent Swansea team too to travel to the Hawthorns and the first chance would fall here in the fifth minute as Jordan Abita collects the ball for us and goes on a run down his right hand side absolutely love Abita look at the pace he's got beats Neil Taylor and keeps on going a wonderful run by Jordan Abita who shoots but it's a great block by the defender had he not blocked that shot it might have gone past Romando but instead it's cleared away and it is still a scoreless in the 29th minute Ben Foster clears this corner but Swansea win it back Jordi and Matt collects the ball plays his forward towards Ki Sung Young the South Korean finds Montero Montero strikes it and it goes just wide of Foster's uh, left hand post and out for a goal kick that was it for the first half and in the second half we'd have to wait until the 69th minute for a chance as Chris Brunt finds victory in each of he finds Will Hughes he finds Brown a day great chance here is a day turns the last man one on one but what a bad finish this was I don't know how I messed that up so badly but I did I smashed it straight to Armando and it was a simple save so still West Brom nil Swansea nil with 10 minutes to go one of the last chances fell here Patrick Roberts found Brown a day who turned round a former Liverpool and Charlton man John Joe Shelby he crossed the ball in picked out Victor and each of but his header went over the bar and out for a goal kick so still scoreless here and the last chance would fall with five minutes to go again it was a counter attack with us leading the way and each found a day a day found an each uh, sorry uh, Malumbu even Malumbu played it backwards towards the run of Brown a day great chance to make it 1-0 but unfortunately a Shot was well saved by Romando and turned behind for a corner. It was how the game finished though, a scoreless draw, a very poor game. That means we'll go for a replay at the Liberty Stadium, that's our next game as well, and that will be the first game of tomorrow morning's episode. So, as always guys, a big thank you for watching the video, I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, then please leave a like, and I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode tomorrow morning.